Asphalt is boring. It's flat, predictable, uninteresting to look at, and it doesn't kick up 10 foot clouds of dust every time you mash the throttle or come screeching to a halt. Luckily this cool stuff called dirt exists. It's like the cool uncle of all the other riding surfaces. It's kind of everything that pavement wishes it was, and it's the best surface to ride on if you're looking for some extra fun on your electric scooter. The best part is that the scooters that are good off-road are still excellent on-road, but the opposite isn't necessarily true. So you can get the best of both worlds by getting an off-road capable scooter. Here are our picks for the top five off-road electric scooters, all tested by yours truly. These will be ordered from least expensive to most expensive. Timestamps are in the description for those of you who want to jump straight to the biggest, baddest, and most expensive models. And links to all the scooters mentioned here will be down below as well. Before we get into our least expensive choice, our honorable mention is the Nami Klima, a scooter that has a ton of potential to be an amazing off-road scooter, but would require a tire swap to get the most out of the power and handling the scooter offers. It has potentially the best suspension on the market, and the scooter is a reasonable size and weight while still offering a solid, stable build that can handle the abuse of off-road riding. Even with the street tires, I had a ton of fun tearing up dirt roads on this thing and even subjecting it to a bit more aggressive off-roading. If there was an option for the scooter to ship with off-road tires and you didn't have to find and replace the tires yourself, this would have easily made our top five. Our budget single motor pick for an off-road electric scooter is the Segway Max G2, which may come as a bit of a surprise. However, the full suspension and traction control make it capable on dirt roads and over more mild terrain. It's not going to be eating up mountain bike single track, but it'll get the job done if you want something that is usable off-road and under $1,000. The street tires aren't ideal for grip, but did surprisingly well in our testing. The Max G2 actually performed better than some of the bigger dual motor scooters we tested just because the suspension is so good. The wide chunky handlebars are great for stability and control. It has the classic Segway Max bulletproof build and stem lock with minimal play. It also has optional traction control to help with wheel spin and sliding on turns and hills. It doesn't make a huge difference since this is just a single motor scooter, but it's another small thing that helps cement its place in our top five. Now to the bigger dual motor scooters. The Cabell Wolf Warrior XGT looks like it was built to off-road with a dual stem design and knobby off-road tires. It's on the smaller and lighter side compared to our final three scooters, which gives it an advantage in handling and nimbleness. The suspension is adequate for almost all types of terrain and whatever it lacks in suspension can be made up for with proper handling in the hands of a good rider. Of all the scooters tested, this has the most mountain bike-like feel with shorter, wider handlebars. It has the power to scramble up even the steepest dirt hills and the brakes to bring you to a stop on a dime. There's very little that this scooter can't do and is an easy off-road favorite of mine. If you're looking for the best all-around off-roading scooter under 2K, the Wolf Warrior XGT is for you. In my full review, I called the Okai Panther the Mercedes G-Class of electric scooters, but probably not for the reasons you would think. When you think of G-Wagons, you probably think of middle-aged rich women going to the mall, but as Whistlin' Diesel proved, despite their luxury appearance, G-Wagons are extremely capable off-road. The Panther has lots of new, impressive features and an attractive, integrated design, but its big 12-inch knobby wheels and aggressive suspension make it an insanely fun scooter in the dirt. It offers plenty of power for tearing up a dirt trail or climbing steep hills. The suspension is on the stiffer side, so I thought that its weakest point would be the ride comfort through more mild sections. However, by airing down the tires to a lower pressure, you can smooth out the ride through these sections. It also excels at soaking up larger bumps that would normally be jarring on other scooters. The shallow angle of the rear tail makes finding a solid, comfortable riding position easy. Like the Wolf Warrior XGT, the lower height handlebars on the Panther give you better control of the scooter while you're crouched and positioned properly. I had a few criticisms of the Panther in my full review video, but none of the issues I had are a problem for the Panther off-road. This is one of the few scooters that I've ridden where I can genuinely say that this is a better off-road scooter than on-road scooter. It's almost like it was made for the dirt. I tested the Apollo Pro more out of curiosity than anything because we have a model with off-road tires on it, but I was super impressed with how it performed. And when you look at it, it makes a lot of sense. The front adjustable hydraulic suspension helps it eat up both small and large bumps alike and is supported by the rear rubber suspension. 
It sits quite high off the ground so you don't have to worry about bottoming out. The handlebars are nice and wide with decent stock grips that keep hand fatigue to a minimum. The unibody construction and solid stem latch makes for a scooter with no flex or play, even through rougher sections. It's got plenty of power to handle everything we tested it through. The drum and regenerative braking has both advantages and drawbacks in the dirt. On the plus side, it's almost impossible to lock up the wheels so an overly aggressive pull of the brakes won't send you over the bars, but it doesn't have quite the same level of sensitivity and control that a nice pair of hydraulic disc brakes would. What's so great about the Pro is that while it is on the pricey side, it's built to do so many things well, and that includes off-road riding. And not just dirt roads, this thing can really hang with the best off-roaders through rough terrain. The biggest downside is that as of right now, there is no option for the Pro to ship with off-road tires, so a tire swap would have to be done yourself. The Cabell Wolf King GTR is the most expensive scooter on this list and is also the undisputed champ of off-roading. This monster has everything you could ever want from a dirt machine. Bulletproof build, adjustable front and rear suspension, huge riding platform and rear tail, wide handlebars and traction control. The suspension feel is on a whole other level than anything else on this list. It feels like it was tailor-made for this type of riding. The super high riding platform means you don't ever have to worry about whacking the deck on a rock or over a rise. This is a scooter that is truly capable of almost anything you could throw at it. The absurd power makes any hill a breeze and the sine wave controllers give you precise control of the throttle when navigating tricky terrain. The traction control is super well executed, sending power to the motor with the most traction. Its only weakness is the lower handlebar height. I know I mentioned this for a few other models that lower handlebar height can be a positive with this kind of riding, but the handlebars on the GTR are just a bit too low for someone at my height. If it had the handlebar height of the Wolf King GT Pro, then this would truly be a perfect off-road scooter. The GT Pro could have made the list by itself, but it felt a little redundant with the GTR being on here. However, if you're a taller rider, it's a good option and can save you a bit of money while losing a bit of the power and suspension capabilities. And while we're talking about high-end off-road capable PEVs, I have to mention the Solar Eclipse, an electric dirt bike we reviewed a couple months ago that is just built for off-road riding. If you're shopping at the high end of the price spectrum and want something seated for off-roading, then the Eclipse is an extra fun high-powered option. Off-roading with a scooter is a ton of fun and I've been beating up electric scooters in the dirt and over rocks for years. There are a lot of scooters out there that can get by in off-road situations, but these five scooters and especially the final four, deliver that extra edge you need to handle the roughest terrain and maximize your fun off-road. If you want to watch a deep dive review for any of these scooters, those videos are available on our channel. Let us know in the comments if you want to see more off-roading content from us in the future. Thanks for watching. I'm Mitchell with Rider Guide, and I'll see you in the next one.